All right, this is the beginning. This is the beginning of your physics course, probably, okay? I'm gonna go over some of the most very basic ideas in physics, and that is position and velocity. We'll also talk about time. And we're gonna do this in one dimension. Okay, let's get started. Here is a car or cart, we call it whatever you want. It's this yellow box right here. And I'm gonna let it move. Let's let it move and see what happens. Okay, it's leaving dots. I just did that so we could tell it's moving. The uh, cyan dot right there is the origin. And I just picked it, you can pick wherever you want. The origin's not real. And I made a little number line right here. So I, it starts off at negative 0.4 meters and it moves up to 0.6 and beyond. And, and so this is the position of the car. The position of the car is the x value that it has. And I just made that axis up. You could have it wherever you want. Okay. Now suppose that I went through and recorded the time and the position for this moving cart. If I did that, and I did, I get the following data. Now this is perfect data because I used a computer animation to make it, but you could imagine it was a real cart moving along at some constant velocity, and, and this is the kind of stuff that you'd get. So I have the time, uh, one, three, five, seven, so forth, and then the position. Uh, in in And that, that video wasn't playing in real time, just so you know. Otherwise, it takes 17 seconds to move. So here's my position. Some of the values are negative, and the times are all positive, but again, it didn't even start at time t equals zero. It doesn't really matter. If I take this and I make a graph of position versus time, it would look like this. And again, notice all the data points are perfectly aligned. Uh, and I can draw a best fit line here, or I could have the computer do it. And I can get a function for this line. And so the function of a line is y equals mx plus b. In this case, where y is the vertical data, x is the horizontal data, m is the slope, and b is the y-intercept. So using my, I had a computer do this, uh, I get a slope of 0.1 and a y-intercept of negative 0.5. And, and those really should have units, but I'm just trying to treat this in terms of a mathematical viewpoint first. Uh, you know, in, in math, you just say y equals mx plus b, and you wouldn't worry about the units, but we do worry about units. Okay, but you do see that it is a straight line and that is important and we do find the slope, that's also important. Okay, so we have the definition of slope from your math class is the change in the vertical, which in this case is x, divided by the change in the horizontal, which in this case is time. So it's delta x, the delta means literally change in uh, over the change in time. So I, sh I could write that as uh, some final x, x2, minus initial x, x1, divided by the final time t2 minus the initial time t1. And those could be at any times and positions as long as they match up. Since the x has, position, has units of meters and the time has units of seconds, this slope would have units of meters per second. And we define this as the average velocity. So the average velocity uh, is the slope, which would be the change in x over the change in time. And so if I use the data from before, I knew the slope was 0.1, so that means the average velocity, 0.1 meters per second. Okay. Now, this is the part that you really need to pay attention. You may want to write this. Velocity is x over t. The velocity is not x over t. Do not do that. Do not say velocity is distance over time. It's not. Okay, when it's not, it's important to think about position x and time t, and it's the rate of change of position. It's that change in position divided by the change in time. It's the uh, slope of the line. If you go back to that line and you take x divided by t, you get a different value because it does not go through the origin. Okay, so in the special case where you start at x equals zero and t equals zero, then x over t gives you the right value, but it's still wrong. Okay, velocity is the change in position over the change in time. It's not x over t. Duh. I don't care what your previous instructors told you. That's wrong. Okay, are we cool now? Okay, Okay. so now we want to use this to predict the future. If Let's say I take my equation 
v average is delta x over delta t, and I'm going to write out the delta x part as x2 minus x1 over delta t. If I multiply both sides by delta t, because you, you have to do that, right? I can't do it to just one side. I have to do it to both sides. So I do it to the right side, and the delta t's are going to cancel, but they're not going to cancel on the left side. So I get v average delta t equals x2 minus x1. Now, I can add x1 to the right side to get rid of that, but then I have to do that to the left side too. So after that, I get the following equation. And this is a fairly important equation. This says x2 is equal to the starting position plus the average velocity times the delta t. Now, x1 and x2 can be whatever you want, but delta t has to be the corresponding time going from x1 to x t, x2. Okay, So you could have a delta t of 0.1 seconds as long as those x's agree. So I, I'm going to use that notation x2 and x1, but those are just the starting and ending points, and delta t is the time it took to move. So we're going to use this later, and it's called the position update formula. It's very useful because it takes the initial position, and you can find out what the position is later. So let's do this an example. Uh, where will the cart be after 27 seconds? So let's start with this equation of the final x is equal to the initial x plus average velocity times delta t. And, and I'm using average velocity here, uh, and the velocity doesn't change, but I'm still using the average velocity because when we do use a velocity that changes, this still works if I call it average velocity. So my average velocity is 0 0.1 meters per second. My initial x is negative 0.4 meters, and my time is 27 seconds. So now I just need to put that into my equation. I put in negative 0.4 plus 0.1 times 27, and I get 2.3 meters. So at 27 seconds, I know where it's going to be. Uh, and so this is how we can predict the future of where it's going to be. Okay, so that's my first introduction to position and average velocity. I'm going to do some extra problems. I usually do this stuff on paper, but I wanted to kind of make it a little bit nicer. So I made this one nicer and there you go. So I'll see you in the next video.